Hello, my name is Benjamin Mel, Regional Sales Manager at Gallagher Fluid Seals. The topic for this video is O-ring failure modes. We are going to give a general overview of how and why an O-ring might fail and how you can determine which kind of failure mode the seal experienced. We will then review specific O-ring failure modes listed on the slide below. We will review the characteristics of each kind of failure mode, diagnostic methods for determining whether an O-ring failed because of that specific failure mode, and methods to design a better O-ring that will not fail in the same manner. As with any sealing product, especially one as popular as an O-ring, there are design best practices and application limitations. Failure modes are the ways or modes in which something might fail. Failures are any errors or defects, especially ones that affect the customer or product. While all seals will wear and fail over a long enough period, we are concerned about failure modes that contribute to premature O-ring and equipment failure. These types of failure modes can be dangerous and even deadly. The following summary of O-ring failure patterns is intended to give the designer or engineer a brief overview of the most common types of failures and a listing of recommended corrective actions. While there are several different types and causes of seal failure, we intend to cover only the types encountered most frequently. With intelligent planning, O-ring selection, and installation practices, the following O-ring failure modes should be avoided. The O-ring is an incredibly versatile and effective seal. However, as applications become more extreme, it is critical to test equipment. Should one of the following O-ring failure modes appear, there is telltale evidence that can be used in consultation with GFS engineers to consider an alternate solution. The premature failure of an O-ring in service can usually be attributed to a combination of causes and not merely a single failure mode. It is important to maximize sealing life and reliability by reducing the probability of seal failure at the onset using good design practices, proper compound selection, pre-production testing, and continued education and training of assembly personnel. O-rings will typically fail for the following reasons. Application pressure is either too high or too low for the O-ring material. Application media is not optimized for the O-ring material, which can cause a range of failures depending on the relationship. Poor hardware design or machining. Installation error. A significant amount of seal failures that we see at GFS are related to customer equipment and installation, and these have nothing to do with the quality or performance of the O-ring itself. Probably the most common cause of O-ring failure is compression set. An effective O-ring seal requires a continuous seal line between the sealed surfaces. The establishment of this seal line is a function of gland design and seal cross-section, which determines the correct amount of squeeze, or compression, on the O-ring to maintain seal integrity without excessive deformation of the seal element. There are several factors that can contribute to compression set failure of an O-ring seal. They are listed on the next slide. In general, Compression set is caused by one or more of the following conditions. Selection of O-ring material with inherently poor compression set properties. Improper gland design. Excessive temperature developed causing the O-ring to harden and lose its elastic properties. High temperatures may be caused by system fluids, external environmental factors, or frictional heat buildup volume swell of the O-ring due to system fluid, excessive squeeze due to over-tightening of adjustable glands, incomplete curing or vulcanization of the O-ring material during production, or the introduction of a fluid that's incompatible with the O-ring material. 
Suggested solutions to the causes of compression set are as follows. Using low set O-ring material whenever possible. Selecting O-ring material that is compatible with the intended service conditions. Reducing the system operating temperature. Checking frictional heat buildup at the seal interface and reducing if excessive. Inspecting incoming O-ring shipments for correct physical properties. So, how do you identify compression set failure? In the simplest terms, a typical example of classic O-ring compression set is when the O-ring ceases to be O-shaped and is permanently deformed into a flat-sided oval, of which the flat sides were the original seal interface under compression before failure. Next, we are going to talk about extrusion and nibbling. Extrusion and nibbling of the O-ring is a primary cause of seal failure in dynamic applications such as hydraulic rod and piston seals. This form of failure may also be found from time to time in static applications subject to high pressure pulsing, which causes the clearance gap of the mating flanges to open and close, trapping the O-ring between the mating surfaces. Now, let's dive into extrusion and nibbling failure analysis. In general, extrusion and nibbling are caused by one or more of the following conditions. Excessive clearances, high pressure in excess of system design or high pressure excursions, the o-ring material is too soft, degradation such as swelling, softening, shrinking, cracking, etc. of o-ring material by system fluid. Irregular clearance gaps caused by eccentricity. Increase in clearance gaps due to excessive system pressure. Improper machining of o-ring gland, such as sharp edges. Or an oversized o-ring which causes excessive filling in the groove. So, how do you prevent or correct extrusion and nibbling? Suggested solutions to the causes of extrusion and nibbling listed above are the following. Decreasing the clearance by reducing machining tolerances. Using backup rings in the groove with the O-ring. Checking the O-ring material compatibility with the system fluid. Increasing the rigidity of the metal components. Replacing the current O-ring with a harder O-ring material. Breaking the sharp edges of the gland to a minimum radius of five thousandths of an inch. Ensuring installation and proper size of the O-rings. Using an alternative seal shape, for example, in some long stroke piston or rod applications, a T-seal with its built-in backup rings may prevent extrusion and spiral failure. So, how do you identify extrusion or nibbling failure? A typical example of O-ring extrusion is when the edges of the O-ring on the low pressure or downstream side of the gland exhibit a chewed, chipped, or feathered appearance. An O-ring that has failed due to nibbling may have the appearance that many small pieces have been removed from the low pressure side of the o-ring. In some forms of extrusion, more than 50% of the o-ring may be destroyed before catastrophic leakage is observed. Thank you for watching part one of our video on failure modes. Stay tuned for part two, which will discuss other common failure mode types.